On the agenda tonight, we're going back to 1992. We're going to be taking a look at Michael Nesmith, and he's going to be performing Joanne. <laughs> Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. First of all, thank you everyone for the requests for this video tonight following the sad news that Michael passed away recently. We're going to be taking a look at this performance from 1992. We've got the guitar out. We'll go through some of what Michael's playing here. I am going to be jumping into the video about halfway through. So if you want to watch it the whole way through without me interrupting it, there's going to be a link in the description below as always. But let's get Michael and Band up on screen and see how they get on. Touched me for a moment with a look that spoke to me of her sweet love. The woman that she was drove her on with desperation, and I saw as she went a most hopeless. Situation for oh, Joanne and the man and the time that made them both run. She was only a girl, I know that well, still I could not. Into yellows and blues And a tune that I could not have sung Oh, the essence is gone Spoke to me of her sweet love. Then the woman that she was drove her on with desperation, and I saw and she went a most hopeless situation for Joanne. That made them both run I'm just going to jump in here just as the uh, lead guitar solo comes in played on acoustic of course having this kind of break in the song is great as well it's just something that you tend to find in the older songs and especially with country music and this has certainly got that 
country undercurrent to it, the fact that the rhythm is very much going along. And if you want to get your picks out, you can try this if you've got your guitars out, playing a C, having this. And just having that alternating bass line, it's not prominent in the mix. The bass would be doing that, and it's not prominent on guitars, but it's got that feel to it. Just that constant change on the bass that changes even over to the D minor. G. Kind of like that, and I love the way we have this. I think that Michael, when he's playing that, he takes off his just his first finger. Like that. So we have this C. See my third finger, the way that's alternating. And here, just with the right hand. And. Really cool run down to the G. And the C that I was playing. That really subtle coming off. And what I'm doing there is allowing the G, effectively, not from the high E string, but from that B, and then placing on the C chord, like that. Which gives it a really nice change to have in there. It just emphasizes that previous lyrical content, but just the melody of the vocal, it's like a response to the call of that melody line of the vocal. So it's really nice the way it sits in there. As I said, I think Michael's playing that. Just taking off the first finger before getting back into the C. If you want to make it a little bit more dramatic, you can have that effective full change down to the G, because all you're doing here is catching your G chord there with your B string, your G and your D. I'm doing a, a little upstroke to then catch it on the down to get the root note of the C in there. The tempo is so solid the whole way through, we're not pushing it here, we're just relaxing into it. Like I said, it's got that undercurrent of country in there because of that alternating bass line and the fact that we do get these solo sections, which is something that I started to say a minute ago about in the older performances, you got an appreciation of the instrumental ability because you would have solo sections in there. We're just about to hear a lead guitar solo and a pedal steel guitar solo, I do believe. So we'll get into that at the end of this analysis video, maybe have a little look at the lead guitar. I just want to talk about Michael's vocal delivery as well because he's got this relaxed approach to it and he's so relaxed that he's actually flipping into his falsetto and he does that at E4. And the reason I've got the piano up on screen is so that we get a little bit of a reference point. So the E4 is here, which you can see pretty much in the top end of our baritone, towards the top end of that range, and towards the top end of the tenor range, but when we're talking about the tenor range, he does flip over into falsetto, E4, and he hits a G on your guitars, that's your E4, and then he hits the G4 in the same falsetto register, so it means that he's getting up as high as here with that falsetto. Now, Generally speaking, when you're talking about vocal ranges, when you're going into falsetto, it's Italian for false, which means that you're kind of like cheating to get up to the notes. So when you're talking about true registers and ranges of a particular singer, the tenor range would assume that you can hit an A4 in your chest voice, in your speaking voice, have all that body to it. And this is why Pavarotti was so revered as a singer because his ability took him all the way up to C5 in chest voice with all of that body behind the sound. But we're making the transition here into falsetto at E4, which is actually quite a low note to transition into falsetto in the first place. Because generally, if I sang that, I wouldn't transition into falsetto hardly at all. I don't really use the register. I tend to go from my chest voice into like a mixed voice into a head voice. But that E string, you can hear that for me, it's not high at all. I can go, and I don't need to change my registers for that, but it's just because my voice sits a lot higher naturally than Michael's did. 
And it's something to take into consideration about singers, singing in general, if you're learning to sing. Everybody's voice sits at a different position range-wise. So I can hit these notes in a, a very light head voice there, but Michael might need to get into falsetto to do that. You can take into consideration it might be an artistic choice to give it that airy quality, to have a little bit of contrast with the rest of the vocals. So there's lots of elements that you can start to throw in here. We'll just jump into the video quickly so you guys can spot that vocal register. Hopefully you'll be able to hear it into falsetto. That spoke to me of her sweet love. And there we have it, just that love. Just that little flip up. And you'll be able to hear how when he gets into that falsetto register, because there's now more air flowing through those vocal cords, you lose the air from <laughs> your lungs and your diaphragm, if you want to think of it in that way, using your diaphragmatic support. You're not holding anything back with falsetto. It all just rushes through the cords. So that's why the notes can't be held for any length of time. Interestingly, Michael is holding quite a long vocal phrase here. It does have a lot of words in there and lasts quite a long time. So by the time he gets to the end, he's still got just enough air to flip up into that falsetto, but it's really well controlled. So just to talk about Michael and the monkeys and the fact that he was a musician. And this is something that I know with him being part of the monkeys it was difficult sometimes given the press that they got for not being real musicians and the fact that it was set up as a TV show following a band and it was like a fictitious band but then they released songs and then in about 1967 they started to get rid of all of the people that came in to play on the songs and the session musicians that would come into the studio and then had a little bit more creative control. But even still, around that time, they then got exposed for not having played the instruments up to that point on the songs that were released. I guess a really accurate way of just getting sales and the perfect marketing strategy because you've got a monopoly on the audience because they're watching the TV show in the first place. The only problem with it is that for guys like Michael who was a musician and you can see here, he can sing, he can play, he could write songs. Interestingly, when they did start The Monkees and Michael got the part, <laughs> was playing the part in The Monkees <laughs> and it's difficult, I think, sometimes for people to separate the TV show from the band, especially when you're talking about Michael because he is, was, and for all intents and purposes, was the musician and the songwriter and did everything as a musician would do. He had already written songs to the point where the production company that were filming and releasing the monkeys and the TV show as a whole bought the rights to the songs that he had written previously that hadn't been released yet to use as releases for the monkeys. So he was very much a songwriter going into that TV show. Just a quick bit of background on this song because this was released in 1970 and it was Michael Nesmith and the first national band. So it was his foray into more of a solo artist kind of thing after the monkeys and he did keep a few songs aside that were just for him after the Monkees that he had written previously, but this was the first album and they released three on RCA Records, I believe in that same year, 1970. For reference, the album was called Magnetic South and this particular song got to number 21 in the charts. So it was a huge hit in its own right. Let's jump back into the video. We'll jump into a little bit more guitar at the end, but also get into a little bit more information about Michael and his career.
innocence is gone I have no tears to cry for her My only thoughts of her are kind Her name was Joanne And she lived in a meadow by She touched me for a moment With a look that spoke to me of her sweet love Then the woman that she was Drove her on with desperation And I saw as she went A most hopeless situation for Joanne and the man and the time that made them both run for Joanne and the man and the time that made them both run And there we have it. Just to point out the change from the major to the minor chord that we have, after the little rundown, we have the C. And it's just that change there from the F to the F minor. It's just a really nice flavor that it gives to it. And it's just gonna take it to that slightly more somber place because we're changing to that minor chord from the major. And it's something that doesn't always work, but here it's just great. <laughs> it's such a nice change, especially with that relaxed vocal over the top. Just to have a quick jump into this solo because it's really melodic. We haven't got a million notes going on a second here because that just wouldn't work in this kind of composition. But we'll have a little listen to it. And it's John Jorgensen, by the way, on this lead guitar. <laughs> it's a really smooth start. We have this. No. Something like that. And little pull-offs there. Really cool. Or maybe a little fill in there. I haven't been through this and worked it all out, but already we've got some really melodic lines happening here and it's all gonna be in our C major shape. So I'm just in major pentatonics here and that's all we've done to work our way up to that point when we've got this. Kind of like that. Kind of that. Not sure whether, just in a rough kind of sense, that's where we're going here. Okay, and now, we're making our way slightly higher up, 15th fret, and we kind of had, that kind of thing, so, just to finish off that line, so that. And, again, pull offs there, on that high E string. And here we go, some double stops, the. Okay, really cool stuff. And now just descending. And we 
pretty much descended all the way down there. Um, oh. And up to 12, 15, 15 again. And. Uh, let me just get that. Little slide up. And. A really cool line there, the way that we just kind of jump our way down and then return back up to 15th fret. That. Yeah, really cool sounding line. And then we're into the pedal steel solo that comes in and just so well played by John there, but then Red, as he comes in, Red Rhodes, just so much feel in the pedal steel playing, the subtle vibrato that's in there. And I don't want this video to go on for too long focusing on guitars, pedal steel, but it is so well played, just these solo sections because they are melodic and they serve the track. It's not like a show off section. I just want to spend a little bit of time talking about Michael and we've already mentioned about struggling with the fabricated image and being exposed for not playing their instruments with the monkeys and the negative press that they got there. But afterwards he moved on and went in his own solo direction. After 1970, he did get heavily into production as well, to the point where he was given his own record label by Electra Records, and that was called Countryside. So he was heavily involved with other artists and was songwriting as well. He worked with Linda Hargrove, and this was in the mid 70s. They wrote a song together called I've Never Loved Anyone More, and that turned into a huge hit for Lynn Anderson. It was in 1977 that he had a huge hit with Rio, which interestingly had an accompanying video clip. And this is really early on for having music videos or video clips that were associated with songs. And he turned this into something called Pop Clips on Nickelodeon. And this was a TV program that puts music videos with music. And this was then taken over and taken off Michael's hands by Time Warner. And that was Amex as well at that time, who then developed it into MTV and the MTV network. So Michael really did have his finger on the pulse when dealing with and thinking about putting music videos videos with the music and showing it on TV. He also won a Grammy for one of his programs that he produced called Elephant Parts and that was a combination of comedy and music videos, that kind of thing. And it turned into a short-lived series on NBC and that was called Michael Nesmith in Television Parts. So he was not only in TV, but he was an executive producer for movies. In 1998, he published his first novel. So when I mentioned earlier in this video about him turning his hand to many different things, you really start to get an appreciation that he had such a wide skill set. Even though Michael went on his own journey from the 70s onwards and had his solo projects, so many projects going on, he did meet up with the guys from the Monkees now and again to play shows, do performances, but we can see here 1992 he was still performing and he was performing in 2018 with Mickey Dollins from the Monkees and that was the first time that they had to cancel some tour dates because of Michael's health and that was because he had quadruple bypass heart surgery. So it was a serious thing back then and they were due to play in 2019 I believe but then the whole COVID thing hit so a lot of these shows had to be cancelled and it just goes to show that he was performing as much as he could and still had that love for music, for getting out there, for entertaining people. But very sad news is great that we can look back at videos like this and see Michael in full flow performing Joanne and just get an appreciation for him as a musician, instrumentalist, songwriter. And he wasn't just in a TV show <laughs> with the monkeys. He was a fully fledged artist in his own right and a producer. And as I've already mentioned in this video, did so many things in so many different artistic forms. So he was a true artist in his own right, but 
Thank you guys so much for requesting this video for tonight. I hope you did enjoy it and I will see you guys at the next one.